University of Maryland's football program. Thank you all for being here today. For those who haven't been keeping score at home, my name is Jim Brady, and I'm chairman of the Board of Regents of the University System of Maryland. As many of you know, the University of Maryland College Park is the state's flagship public institution of higher education and research. In recent years, thanks in large part to its many very talented faculty and students, it has continued its steady rise in many academic and other rankings. The University System of Maryland Board of Regents is determined not only to maintain, but also to accelerate the pace of that success. We share the aspiration and belief of many Marylanders that College of Cork can become one of the very best public universities in the nation in terms of both teaching and research. In lockstep with the academic success is the need to foster a well-run athletics program that is designed and operated to put the needs of our student athletes first. As, been said, as has been said many times in recent months, athletics, for better or worse, serves as the front porch of the university. Which brings us to the topic we are here to discuss today. Since the tragic death of Jordan McNair on June 13th and the subsequent allegations regarding the football program, the Board of Regents has sought to uncover every discernible fact to better understand what happened and to make whatever decisions are necessary to ensure that it never happens again. We owe that to Jordan McNair, to his family and friends, to his teammates, and to every student athlete in the university and at universities across the system. In our efforts to uncover all possible facts and to ensure a thorough, responsible, and transparent process, the Board of Regents assumed control of two separate investigations. The first was led by Dr. Rod Walters and focused on the circumstances surrounding the death of Jordan McNair. That report was shared with Mr. McNair's family on September 20th and released to the public on September 21st. The board also assumed oversight and control of the independent commission to review the culture of the football program. Charlie Sheeler, a partner at DLA Piper, led that effort and is here with us today. The commission's report which was not about and did not review the circumstances of Mr. McNair's death, was first shared with the board on October 19th. The board considered the commission's findings in a meeting on October 23rd, and the report was subsequently made public by the media. On October 25th, the Board of Regents accepted all findings and recommendations contained in the commission report. I would like to highlight just a few of those here. The board accepts the commission's finding that the Maryland football team did not have a toxic culture, but it did have a culture where problems festered because too many players feared speaking out. The board accepts that during football coach DJ Durkin's tenure, the athletics department lacked a culture of accountability did not provide adequate oversight of the football program and failed to provide Dr. Durkin, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Durkin, with the tools, resources, and guidance necessary to support and educate a first-time head coach in a major football conference. The board accepts that both Mr. Durkin and leadership in the athletics department share responsibility for the failure to supervise strength and conditioning coach Rick Court, and that on too many occasions Mr. Court acted in a manner inconsistent with the university's values and basic principles of respect for others. And the board accepts that the university leadership bears some responsibility for the ongoing dysfunction of the athletics department. 
These are, of course, just a few of the findings accepted by the board. The board also accepts all the commission's recommendations. This includes the recommendation which was shared by Dr. Walters that College Park should institute a strong medical model for student athlete care to improve health outcomes and ensure that the university is a leader in collegiate sports medicine best practices. What happened to Jordan McNair was tragic and heartbreaking. At the same time, the commission found no direct link between the administrative dysfunction in the athletics department and Jordan McNair's death. So what are we to conclude? After taking the time necessary to gather and thoroughly review the facts, and based upon what we know today, the Board of Regents believes that the university bears responsibility for what happened to Mr. McNair and will live up to its responsibility. In the coming weeks, I expect the Office of the Attorney General to conclude its legal review and advise the university and system as to next steps. While that process unfolds, the board's mission is clear. We must ensure that the recommendations in these two reports are implemented swiftly at College Park and as appropriate at every campus across our university system. As I mentioned, the adoption of an independent medical model is chief among them, and it must be implemented immediately. While this is not necessarily a standard practice at universities across the nation, it is a best practice, and it will be our practice. To ensure that this happens, the Board of Regents will establish an independent monitoring group to oversee the implementation of these policies and procedures. The independent monitoring group, which we expect to name in the coming weeks, will report to the full Board of Regents. Working with the Chancellor, the Independent Monitor will, will provide full and unhindered access to the University's athletic department, including its personnel, facilities, practices, and games. As we move forward with the implementation of these policies and procedures, we agree with the Commission that there is common ground to be found among the various stakeholders across the University. We believe, we believe that common ground will go hand in hand with our work to build an athletics department and culture that is consistent with our values, the most important of which is the well-being of our students. <clears throat> and that will depend on leaders on all levels, the board, the university, and the athletics department, and the football team. Let me take a moment to speak about these leaders. Both Kevin Anderson's and Rick Court's involvement and actions were heavily scrutinized in the commission report. Neither of these individuals are at the university today. The Board of Regents met last week with President Wallace Lowe, Athletic Director Damon Evans, and Head Coach D.J. Durkin. All three individuals understand and have accepted that they share responsibility for the dysfunction within the athletic department. But we also found that all three individuals share our commitment to improving the culture in the university's football program and to implementing the recommendations of both the Walters Report and the Independent Commission. As President, Dr. Lowe bears responsibility for the dysfunction in the athletics department. He has acknowledged as much to the Board of Regents. Since this summer, President Lowe has begun to implement a series of reforms, many cited in the Walters Report, to transform the operations of the Athletics Department. We expect him to continue doing so in the coming weeks and months. The Board knows that Dr. Lowe is committed to this critical task, and he will speak to that commitment in a few moments. Damon Evans also shares responsibility for the dysfunction in the Athletics Department during the time that he served as deputy and interim director. He has acknowledged as much to the board and has agreed to address any remaining issues expeditiously. At the same time, we understand that as both deputy and interim AD, he first reported to another leader. 
then was only in a transitional position. Since being appointed to the role permanently in June, Mr. Evans has begun working with President Lowe to implement a series of reforms consistent with the findings in the Walters report and the commission investigation. We believe that Mr. Evans should be given the opportunity to lead the athletics department and accordingly we recommend we recommend to the university leadership that he be given that opportunity. He has shared with the board his thoughts on a strong plan to address the issues he observed in the department before being appointed its leader and we believe that he is the right person to move the department forward at this critical time. The Board of Regents also met with Coach Durkin. We believe Mr. Durkin failed to adequately supervise strength and conditioning coach Rick Court, but that this failure is shared by the university's athletic department. We also acknowledge the many individuals who spoke with the independent commission about Coach Durkin and his leadership style. Those comments as detailed by the commission were at times very critical of Coach Durkin and his lack of oversight of Mr. Court. But many others, players and families in particular, spoke very positively and with great affection about Coach Durkin and his deep commitment to the football program and his players and their families. We believe that Coach Durkin has been unfairly blamed for the dysfunction in the athletic department. And while he shares some responsibility, it is not fair to place all of it at his feet. Coach Durkin was incredib incredibly forthright with the Board of Regents during our meeting. He also participated in more than 10 hours of interviews with the Independent Commission. He has acknowledged his role in the athletics, in the athletics department's shortcomings while he served as head coach, and he has committed to ensuring the proper reforms, working with the Independent Monitor to see that they are implemented. For these reasons, the Board of Regents recommends to the university leadership that Coach Durkin remain head coach of the University of Maryland College Park football team. Find my, my gin here. We believe that he is a good man and a good coach who is devoted to the well-being of the student athletes under his charge. He is also at the beginning of his coaching career with a great deal of promise and much still to learn. We, be, we believe he deserves that opportunity. For the next several years, the football program in particular and the athletics department in general will be closely scrutinized both by the independent monitoring group, by the Board of Regents, and by the broader public. We will expect everyone involved to perform in a manner that is totally consistent with the values of the University of Maryland College Park. There will be no third chance for any of those involved to get this right. Before I take questions, I would like to conclude where we began. And that is the tragic death of Jordan McNair. It is our hope when we assumed oversight of the two separate investigations that we would uncover all the discernible facts and in an open and transparent manner make the decisions necessary to foster the health and well-being of student athletes. And while we have made those decisions, the process of ensuring a healthy and positive football culture is only just beginning. In the months and years to come, accomplishing this goal and thereby modeling our values as a university system and as Marylanders, we will take the concerted efforts of everyone involved, including university leaders and the Board of Regents. We will forever, forever be guided by the memory of Jordan McNair. Thank you. If I could, I would like to invite Dr. Lowe up to make a few remarks. May I do that? Thank you, Chairman Brady, and thank you all for being here this afternoon. I would like to begin 
by thanking the Commission on Football Culture for all the work they have been doing the past few months reviewing our football program. The Commission concluded that we do not have a toxic culture, but found serious problems that call for serious reform. The report also states that the leadership of the university bears some responsibility for the stake of the athletic department. And as the chairman has indicated, I have accepted that responsibility. I am pleased that the board has confidence in athletic director Damon Evans, in his leadership, because he, since, became, since he became appointed athletic director in early July of 2018, he has put that department on a path towards becoming more uni united, more cohesive, and more thriving. He is, in my judgment, one of the finest athletic directors in this country. And I'm proud to call him my colleague. I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank again Dr. Rod Walters, whose work over the summer and the fall resulted in a thorough examination of the events that led to the hospitalization and eventually the tragic death of Jordan McNair. And as you know, we began implementing those recommendations long before they were even released in, I think it was mid-October. And that work, of course, continues. And to the Board of Regents, who assumed full authority and responsibility for these two investigations, I want to thank them for their service and their due diligence. For more than eight years, I've served as the captain of a ship. Not any ship, but the flagship. The flagship of the state of Maryland with 40,000 students, 10,000 faculty and staff, spread over 130 academic and administrative departments across the campus, and included in those numbers 520 student athletes and 230 staff members. Now, it's relatively easy to be the captain of a ship so long as the ship is sailing through calm waters. But eventually, at some point, that ship may run into a storm. And it is the captain's job to navigate that ship to calmer waters. It is an abdication of responsibility of a captain to abandon ship in the middle of a storm. And I don't know how many new captains want to join the ship while the ship is in the middle of a storm. So the regions have asked me to do exactly that, to steer the ship to calmer waters. That includes the following. First, to provide the leadership to implement a new culture in football that emphasizes first and foremost the well-being of our student athletes and their success. Success both on the field, in the classroom, and eventually in life. A healthy and successful culture of football. Secondly, it entails the sailing the ship to calmer waters, 
to implement all of the recommendations of the Commission and of the Board of Regents. And of course, to continue the implementation of the Dr. Walters report. Damon Evans and I are absolutely committed to implementing these reforms in a way that's transparent and makes an impact in terms of changing the culture. We will share with you and with our campus the specific plans that we have already been preparing and we will share them in the near future. In August, after I had been informed, oh, probably a month before that, of the report of the findings of Dr. Walters, but long before they were made public. In August, I accepted legal and moral responsibility for the mistakes that were made in the diagnosis and treatment of Jordan McNair. Today, I stand by that statement 100%, and I will do everything possible to fulfill that responsibility. This will be my last year as president of the University of Maryland, my last academic year. As the Board of Regents is aware, I will retire from the presidency in June of 2019. Since I arrived on this campus in October of 2010, I have had the honor and the pleasure of working alongside some of the most impressive faculty, staff, students, alumni, and friends of the university to advance our beloved flagship institution. For me, the job of president is more than a job. It's a calling to service. And it's a calling that I believe is larger than simply having a job. Together with all of these stakeholders, I believe we have boldly transformed the university. Today, the university deservedly stands as one of the most distinguished institutions of learning in the country. I'm proud of the shared legacy that's been created, and I will have more to say about that at a later time. For now, I'm focused on navigating or helping to navigate this great institution through the storm and I will be focused on leading the flagship to continued success and to a smooth transition in leadership. Thank you. Well, let me say two things. Number one, what this university has accomplished during Wallace's time here is well documented and congratulations on all of that. This is absolutely a first class institution and Wallace has certainly contributed to that. So thank you very much. And I also thank you, Wallace, for your commitment to see that the recommendations over the next year are fully implemented. I think your leadership can play a very significant role in making that happen. So thank you very much for that. And obviously we'll have much time to talk about your future, but I'm sure it will be very bright. Thank you very much. Uh, I doubt that there are any questions, but uh, 
If there is one or two, yes, there's one right here. Jordan McNair's parents have repeatedly called for the dismissal of DJ Durkin as a coach, saying that he didn't keep the promise that he made to them at their uh, table while recruiting Jordan. What message do you have for Jordan McNair's parents right now? Just that the regents have looked at this very carefully and are very conscious of, of, that, of that fact. And we made a decision based upon a very strong belief amongst the regents that DJ is absolutely prepared to move in a direction that is totally consistent with the values of the university. And we are, his, his presentation to us and what we have heard from others would suggest that he is absolutely committed to that and I believe very capable of accomplishing that. There are media reports that President Sloan decided to retire in June. Uh, that there is, that he didn't want to keep the coach around. Did you all address that, whether this came down to was it the coach or was it the president? Is that true at all? Well, Dr. Lowe just announced that he is going to retire, so that's no longer. Because the coach is dead. You'd have to ask him that question. I don't believe that's the case. I have accepted the recommendations in full of the Board of Regents. I'm not exactly sure of the timing. Wallace, are you clear on that? Uh, earlier, since, of course, we confirm all of these things, uh, this morning, the first thing that Damon Evans did was to reach out and contact all of the players and talk to them and their coaches, first and foremost. And so the primary concern was they are the students who are affected. And if we are true to our mission, that it is the well-being and the welfare of students, they're the first ones who deserve to know. How do you describe your relationship with Coach Durkin right now and where do you think it's going to go in the next several months until your retirement? He has been a successful coach in terms of many aspects of football. He is coming back and we, will be, we are very supportive of the recommendations of, uh, uh, of the Board of Regents. Mr. Brady, can I ask you a question? Uh, uh, earlier in your comments, uh, before Dr. Lowe came up, you said that the leadership of the university bears some responsibility for the, the culture. Uh, and then you mentioned Kevin Anderson and Rick Ford. Are you saying that those two bear, and they're not here, that those two bear the most responsibility for this? No. My mention of them only was that those are two who were involved. And I'm sure you've read the commission report. They certainly have been involved. And my point was merely to say those, are, those folks are no longer in the... Uh, in the employee of the university. I think the, the folks that I mentioned uh, in the leadership all bear responsibility and all of them totally agree on that. All agree that they bear those responsibilities. And, and I am particularly heartened that those people who truly understand what their failings <coughs> might have been are poised and ready and understand the existing culture better than anyone else could possibly. Is there a question there? How exactly is this independent monitoring group going to function? How are you going to ensure that everything is the way it's supposed to be, that there's no abuse? That's what yeah, well, it, it's a little bit of a work in progress, but conceptually, it is a group of knowledgeable people who will report directly to the Board of Regents, to the full board, and we will set, we will set the guidelines for all of that. So we're not totally ready. We don't have any names to tell you at this point in time. But they will be folks who have a background that will allow them to look at an athletic program and a, a football program and be able to comment knowledgeably. Yes? Uh, Mr. Durkin says that he did not have responsibility to oversee court and that he didn't feel court uh, crossed the line. But you said that he's accepted those responsibilities. Did that change at some point? Did he convey something to you personally different than he conveyed to the commission? Part of the dysfunction in the athletic department was confusion that existed uh, in the athletic department about who was reporting to whom. That is, that is an issue. So it was confusion, and, and that was part of the problem. And what 
we're going to put into place, what the university will put in place, as Dr. Lowe suggested, was clarity in terms of those reporting responsibilities. So that confusion would no longer exist. What's that? The, the organizational chart you guys put out quarters directly below Durkin, and is in this contract that you report to Durkin? There, are, there, there were many organization charts. You happen to see one of them. There were many, and it's, it made for a very confusion uh, situation in terms of who was responsible for what. The football players, some who don't trust Durkin, some who saw their brother die on the field and an athletic training staff that let him die. What do you say to those players who I mean, that is the challenge, and I think Damon Evans, as, as, as the President Lowe indicated, met with the team today, and they, we will do everything we can, and, and DJ Durkin has to do a major job in terms of winning the confidence of people. I would tell you, and the report, the commission report was very clear, there are an awful lot of folks in the system, in, on the team, who are very supportive of DJ Durkin. He's got to make sure he brings all of that together and, and creates the confidence level that we all need. And, and that is a challenge. I, I grant that. But it is a challenge we think he can meet. Sir, Durkin running practice yes. now on leave, uh, Wes Robinson and Steve or Paul, what's happened to them? That is, that is not part of what we looked at. Wallace, do you have any comments with respect to those situations? The athletic director is responsible for all the staff, coaches and other staff in the athletic department, and he will make that decision. Dr. Lowe, will Durkin be coaching Saturday, and is he with the team now? I know that, he, that the players were addressed, but is he currently with the team? Will he be on the sideline for Saturday's game? The coach, all coaches report directly to the athletic director. They do not report to the president. I am the captain of the entire university, not of the athletic department. But you're raising a very important point and a very good point, and that is the job of the athletic director. Yes. What did uh, DJ Durkin say to you when he met with you in person on Friday that convinced you that uh, he deserved to be the team? And when you met separately with Dr. Lowe, did he express to you that he wanted um, Durkin to be fired? Our meeting with DJ Durkin was very instructive. His passion for the university, for the football team, and the players was absolutely impressive and very believable and very consistent with what was mentioned in the commission report as well. I mentioned that the commission met for 10 hours with uh, Durkin. and and. It was very clear that they felt that his commitment to the players and to their success and their safety was absolutely genuine. And we had that same impression after we met with him. The commission, the commission said that, uh, you had a two-part question? Yes. Oh, really? I asked if Dr. Lowe expressed to you when he met with you in person that he would like to see the German fire. I did not meet with Dr. Lowe on that. Sir, um, you said, and the commission said, uh, that they felt that uh, D.J. Durkin, the rookie head coach, did not receive proper guidance from the people in his superiors. I'm curious, when, you, when, it, when a university hires a football coach in the Big Ten and pays him millions of dollars a, a year, who in the university is better able to tell him how to be a football coach? Well, the, I mean, it is the responsibility of the athletic department. The athletic director, when he was hired, it was Kevin Anderson, as I think you know. And, and but it is the, the, it is the responsibility of the department to recognize that we're not hiring a coach who has been a head coach for 15 years from another program. We're, coach, we're hiring a coach who had been a defensive coordinator and not a head coach before. And the difference between being a coordinator and a head coach is huge in terms of the depth and breadth of the responsibilities that go with that. And I think we all agree and, and the athletic department agrees, and Dr. Lowe agrees, that we didn't provide all of the training, all of the <coughs> insights that a head, new head coach should be aware of as they move into that, into a role, especially in a conference such as the Big Ten, 
which is a, as you know, a very big time conference. Yes. He talked about what he had done over the last several months in terms of addressing the dysfunction in the department. And, and he had a plan. And he had a plan that made sense to us and a plan that we think can restructure the athletic department in a way to make it what we expect an athletic department at the University of Maryland to be. But it was that commitment, the level of detail, all of the the input he provided in terms of how he was going to do this. It's one thing to be able to just say, I'm going to fix it. It's another thing to have a plan that makes sense in terms of getting to that point. And he, he accomplished that. Well, I wish I could give you a precise time, but uh, it has to be implemented as quickly as possible. And I think uh, Dr. Lowe agrees that we need to put this in place as quickly as possible, and that will become very clear pretty soon. How much did the board consider possible litigation from the McNair family or even from Coach Durkin or Damon Evans and their recommendations? No, that, was not, that was not a factor. We made the factor, we made the decision based upon what we thought was in the best long-term and short-term interest of the University of Maryland. That's, that was the basis for our decision. It wasn't based on other factors. How would you describe or characterize the relationship between uh, DJ Durkin and Damon Evans, given that Evans apparently did not provide them proper resources, proper oversight? How does that relationship continue this might be for Dr. Lowe? I think they both understand the realities of all of that. They both understand where the, sh where the shortcomings and what they did were, and they are all committed to getting it right. You know, Damon was in, an, was in a difficult situation in that he came into this role uh, in an uh, in unusual manner. He had been associate athletic director and interim athletic director. But as you know, those are very different positions than being the top dog. And now he is the top dog. And I think that provides him with the, what is needed to get this, this stuff done. The two of them will have to resolve that. There, there is a lot of stuff out there that needs to get resolved. They all understand what it has to, what has to be done. But at the end of the day, the only answer that's acceptable is that we are going to do everything to make this work. This question is for Dr. Lowe, if you could. Um, outside the state of Maryland and inside the state, there's a lot of people looking at this program now with the leadership in place that was the leadership when Jordan McNair died. What do you want to say to people that think no nothing has happened and, and the current leadership that was in place then is in place now and things are... Um, going on the status quo. Do you dispute that or what do you want to say to those critics? What I would say is that we need to have a football culture that is healthy, that has the well-being and the welfare of student athletes foremost a culture that reflects the values of this institution, respect for human dignity, for the success of students, student athletes, and they can be motivated, motivated to perform at the highest levels, but yet do it in a way that ensures their success and respects their dignity. That is the challenge before us. I can tell you that Damon Evans and I have been working very hard on this and coming up with an approach that we hope will be a model, not just for the other schools in the system, but a model for the nation on how to have that kind of a healthy culture and also a winning culture. I would just say, just 
to, on your basic premise. I think it's totally inaccurate to say that nothing has happened. In fact, the recommendations that are being put in place, both from the Walters report and the commission report, are not common on all, on all college campuses for football programs. They are very much state of the art. They're very much best practices. So what, what has been done, I think, is more than, than cavalier. I think what we've done is really begin to institute programs in the, within the program or controls and protocols in the program that can make the University of Maryland a model football program. And I don't dismiss that as not getting anything done. Okay. Yes. State legislators are already expressing frustration that Dr. Lowe's going to be leaving and Coach Durkin staying. They think it's a sign that athletics were put before academics. What do you have to say to that? It's absolutely untrue. Academics are the primary thing that exists at College Park. That is why it exists. Uh, athletics support the academic mission, and that will always be where we go first. I can't control how people view all of these things, but I can tell you without equivocation, the idea that academics is not foremost at University of Maryland is absolutely and unequivocally wrong. Yes. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you all for coming. Appreciate it. And uh, my guess is we will talk again. And so Board of Regents Chairman James 